Welcome to The Wedding Edit, a wedding planning podcast for the modern couple. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about wedding day timelines or a run sheet, if you will. Um, We're talking about this today because I personally have found this is something that couples can really struggle with. They, um, They might not know that it's something that they even need to do I find yeah yeah actually I, I've had to tell some of my couples that haven't booked our coordination package where we don't do your run sheet timeline I've had to say to them like have you got a timeline can you yeah. send it to us and they're yeah. like what what's that yeah well it's one of like the biggest things I think that helps with your wedding day like it is so important um and it's something that helps your day run really smoothly and well and it's just a huge I think, thing for communication between people as well, which is great because you need people to know what they're doing. It takes the stress away, the noise away as well. Yeah. And the interruptions because pe- otherwise if you don't have it, I think people be coming up to you all day going, yeah. hey, like what about this, what about that? Yeah. And you're like, stop asking me questions, you know. Yeah, it's my wedding day. But Leave me just alone. <laughs> taking it back a step. Just for those who have no idea what we're talking about, I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. But if you haven't planned a wedding before, when we're talking about your wedding day timeline, we're talking Mm -hmm. about from the moment you wake up to Mm -hmm. probably the moment you go to bed without the X-rated content. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But we don't need to know what happens on your wedding night. Yeah. Okay. So maybe not like until you go to bed, but maybe yeah. like the end of the yeah. wedding. You probably don't need to also write in there, this is when we're going to bed. And I'm having one wheat bix with um, <laughs> almond milk for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that much detail, but yeah. it's basically your yeah wedding day, timeline, event order, run mm-hmm. sheet, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but if you did want to know about timeline as well for when you should book things leading up to your wedding yeah yeah like your got wedding another planning. episode for that yeah. yeah yeah so like there's the on the day timeline and then there's your actual you know lead up to yeah. your wedding planning mm-hmm. so in that kind of 12 month 18 month mm-hmm. lead up we have got a um free checklist timeline yeah. is that what we called it so in episode number four we actually talked about your wedding planning timeline, so where to actually start with your wedding planning and that's all about the lead up to your wedding, when to book certain suppliers, when to do certain things. We actually have a free template you can download, like a checklist um, for your wedding planning. So if you head to episode four and the show notes, you can download that for free. Um, But today we're going to talk about your on-the-day timeline, which is just as important and also a lot of couples have no idea how to put this together. So we have done you a favor and we've actually put together a guide a template for you so something that you can maybe use as like the skeleton um, for your on the day timeline and fill it in and you can alter it however you like yeah so the good thing about that too is that you can pick and choose what you are putting in because there's so many variables when it comes to your wedding day because you might be eloping or you might be a couple from overseas and not have any family to do family photos with. Like there's just so many things that I think you can have Mm. and include on your wedding day, but it's up to you what you want to include. And like I guess as a disclaimer, we probably can't include every cultural, traditional element in that. It's going to be a very basic timeline, but we can – you know, um, you you can add in your, you know, if you're a Greek, you know, from Greek heritage, you might have have Greek dancing in there. Mm-hmm. So, um, or you might have a Chinese tea ceremony. Yeah. So, you know, obviously take ours as more of a um, example, but add in, yeah, any of your cultural, I guess, traditions that you want to include, mm-hmm. formalities. Mm. So let's talk about why is it important to have a wedding day timeline. So that you know where to be, when, and your suppliers know what's going on. Yeah. Is that what, yeah. Well, yeah, that too. And I think also making sure that you have enough time for everything everything that you want to happen on the day. Yep. I mean, you need to have a good amount of time if you... For your, for your ceremony, I guess you wouldn't want to give them like just 10 yeah. minutes. And you don't want to feel rushed and you yeah. don't want people, as soon as you 
feel rushed, you then feel stressed. Yeah. Um, if you haven't got a timeline, like I said before, you've got everyone's coming up asking you a gazillion questions. It gets yeah. very overwhelming and all of a sudden your day becomes about like you having to keep everyone organised. Yes. yes. If you don't have that timeline to refer to, mm-hmm. it's going to be stressful for you. Yeah. I think it also helps you to keep to the times as well so that you do have enough time to do those things and you're not feeling like they're all just going to run into each other and you're just ticking everything off as you go, Yeah, um, which is really good because you don't want to feel like, oh, I'm just doing this because I have to do it. Like there's this speech and then there's this speech and then there's this speech and then there's cake cutting and then there's the dance and then oh, I need to go say hello to this person or like just. You don't want it to be rigid can, like. Yeah. Yeah, and also it shouldn't be, um, you know, I have to do this because this is what's done at yeah. weddings. It should be how do I want my day to – our, sorry, not my – how <laughs> do we want our day to flow? Yeah. And, yeah, and like it, it also – if if you just, for example, I guess, if you – if you were to say, oh, these three people are doing speeches but you don't give them a time, yeah. you give them a time limit, yeah, then it's going to – it's like a domino effect on yeah. everything else. It can blow out, yeah. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. What have you seen like um, happen when someone doesn't have a timeline just in the past, I'm sure, because you're oh. there for the night. You're th- I'm not usually yeah. there for the evening. Yeah. Well, we – I remember one of our very first weddings – um, where we weren't actually because we as the photographers now construct a timeline with our couples from like the very first consultation that we yeah. do with them uh, before they book us. So it makes it easier for them because they're going into booking all of the other vendors knowing what like, they have to talk yeah, about. Yeah, and, and what times they've got and how much time they need for things, which is really good and really important. But, um, yeah, we had this one wedding um, when we first started and – like we turned up to the um, like the location of where the bride was getting ready and um, things just weren't kind of moving along at the pace that they should have been. And then it was even worse when we got to the groom. They were like they hadn't even checked into the hotel yet and they were kind of like laying on the lawn out, for, out the front of the hotel. Like what, just, sun baking? Yeah, just like really <laughs> like has, um, <laughs> which is fine but like – we were like, oh, we don't have much time. Like in their jocks or <laughs> no, they, they had clothes on. They just hadn't checked in yet to the hotel uh, to get ready. And by that point, as a photographer, you want them to be in their suits, yeah, and ready to put their shoes on, like and you know, showered and hair done. But they hadn't even showered yet or anything like and that. And if they so, didn't have a timeline, yeah. they probably had no idea or concept yeah. of. So, I mean, they had the loose times of, you know, like what time is the ceremony and what time is the reception. Um, but they but, didn't know when you were yeah. turning up probably. No, they, no one, they knew what time we were coming. But, yeah, we just didn't know at that point how to guide our couples. So yeah. it was definitely like an us and them problem, if that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, early on, you, you know. Yeah, you learn very quickly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's so funny. I'm sure you've got some <laughs> great stories about that. So I guess um, we've talked about why it's important, but where to start is often something that and obviously most of the time when I'm working with couples, I'm helping them build their timeline mm-hmm. as a planner if they book that service. So, um, But there are some times when they book my styling package where I don't do that and mm-hmm. they're like they've got no clue where to yeah. start and I do still have to guide them. Yeah. So I suppose – my biggest tip on where to start is, you know, figure out what your key times are going to be. So mm-hmm. for your ceremony and reception yeah, and have like that rough idea in your head of this is kind of when we want the ceremony to be and this is roughly when we want the reception to start. Mm-hmm. But before you do anything or even send out invitations or set those times in stone, you need to talk to your venue slash caterer, mm-hmm. your photographer, mm-hmm. probably they're the key people. Yeah, and um, p- possibly also the MC um, or DJ or entertainment that you've got as well because like a band that's playing will have a certain time that they want to play as well. Like if you want them to be playing during mains and stuff like that so they have like certain sets and things that they do. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I feel like they could be maybe they could come in like – if you were looking at it like tiers, it would be like yeah. photographer and yeah. venue slash caterer first, mm-hmm. then definitely like your music because they will have to work around meal times, mm-hmm. won't they? Yeah. And like, yeah. and then obviously key photography 
time. Yeah, and the photographer will also liaise with the videographer generally. Um, yeah. Sometimes there's like videographers that are like super organised and love to do a timeline as well and have their own kind of version of it. Um, if you are being booked first, um, like as a photographer, it's good for you to just like let the videographer know. Yeah. Got yeah. timeline or whatever. So like your vendors will liaise with each other and talk to each other. And photographers have a really good idea as well of how much time videographers need. So they need more time to set up for like the ceremony if there is video and stuff as well. They normally need like 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And mm. your photographer, I would say, would know like sometimes even more th- so than a venue and caterer how long <laughs> certain things take particularly the things that happen before you get to the ceremony Mm -hmm. because like and the other thing I think that gets quite confused is sometimes if um, with a couple sometimes they've got like too many different timelines being thrown at them. Yeah. So they've got like the venue sends them a timeline but it's Mm -hmm. like starting from the ceremony. Yeah. To the end of the night, yeah. but then their photographer sends them a timeline, and it's they're the like, "Oh, these don't really match yeah. up." So yeah. it can get overwhelming. So it's important yeah. to, when we talk about where do we start, yeah, open that conversation up early. Mm-hmm. As soon as you yeah. book them, get a copy of an, ex- an example timeline from the venue, an example timeline from your photographer, yeah, and then look at those side by side, yeah. And it, it is like a jigsaw. You've yeah, got to is. kind of like. Put, put it all together yeah. and there'll be some conflicting things and mm. sometimes your photographer will look at your venue's timeline and go, oh, that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And then that's all well and good for your photographer to say that. But if you go back to the venue and say, oh, my photographer's decided we're doing this, there might be costs associated with that. The mm-hmm. venue might say, oh, well, if they want you to bring your ceremony forward an hour, you have to pay this. Yeah. Extra cost. So yeah. that's why it's really important to talk about it really early. Mm. Yeah. So I think a really good point that you brought up then, Kelly, was talking about how you do kind of get thrown a couple of different timelines from different people. And I think it's really good to, when you get those, um, it can feel really overwhelming but Mm. just know that it doesn't have it doesn't have to be that and you don't have to sit in that place so it is okay to ask for help and I think basically what you do is because we as a photographer we give like a full day timeline yeah it's just got like like template times in there. Like this is how much time you need for this. This is how much time generally you need for this. All of that can go out the window. Like you just do whatever you want. But basically we have times in there that talk about the reception times, but then also the venue gives reception times to couples based on what works for their venue, which is amazing, which is great. So the couple can then just be like, okay, the venue have given me you know, timing from my ceremony at four o'clock to, you know, 12 p.m. Mm. And these are the times that they say work really well as a generic kind of template for them. Yeah. You don't have to keep it as that generic template. You no. can change things around. You don't have to do yeah. a cake cutting when you walk in. You no, don't have right. to do things in the order that your suppliers are telling you. Yeah. But you have to, fa- there are certain things that are rigid that can't be mm. moved yeah and that's the sunset yeah <laughs> the sunset can't yeah. be moved yeah and then it also for no one. <laughs> well and food service which yeah it can I, once the chefs are cooking mm-hmm. they can't stop yeah they can't stop and like yeah. and then put it in the microwave <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I often hear like caterers say to me like once the meals are on and they're yeah. cooking they have to, we can't, yeah. we can't change that. So yeah. there's those certain things that can't, they're rigid. Yeah. But no, then that's everything right. else can be, yeah. you know, yeah. pretty fluid. And yeah. I think you should definitely go into it with an open mind. And like you said, Dana, we can give a template to you, but it's an example. You don't, yeah. not everyone does a cake cutting. Not yeah. everyone has a cake. We've, we go yeah. on about this in lots of other episodes. <laughs> so we don't need to go down that yeah. path, but um, take it with a grain of salt. But think about the things that can't move mm-hmm. when you're looking at it and what yeah. is rigid um, and then just work it out from there. So when you're creating your on-the-day timeline, there are some key people that are involved in this, obviously the couple. Um, and I think it's a really good point to make that you need to, like whoever is the organiser in the partnership, the other person still needs to be involved. Like yeah. even if you're like, if they're like, they don't want to be involved at all, 
definitely talk to them about the loose timings of the day and then send them the timeline when you're done because yeah. you don't want them to be like, oh, I don't know what time anything is happening. Like, yeah, yeah so we've seen a few clueless partners on wedding days. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's good good to do that. But the key people when helping you to create are people like your venue, MC, DJ or entertainment, um, your photographer, videographer, um, and the caterer. Wedding planner as well. Yeah, wedding. Of if you've course, got a wedding, wedding planner, planner yeah, I mean, they'll just do the whole thing. Yeah, if you don't have a wedding planner, I guess this episode's probably more for the people that don't have a wedding the planner. DIY, yeah. But if you do have a wedding planner or an on the day coordinator, yeah. it's important to get them involved yeah. early as well, just like you would with your photographer in your venue. Yeah. Yeah. But you can do it. Yeah, like you can you, do it, guys. Yeah, you, you can, can do, do it. it. Yeah, we believe in you. <laughs> We're cheering you on. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you will do it. <laughs> because if you don't, everything's going to turn to um, the proverbial. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Cut that out. You can do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Olive knows you can do it. Yeah. Is there a camera on Olive? Yeah, there's an Olive cam. <laughs> oh, so good. She's so cute. Okay, all right. <laughs> So so let's talk about what you should consider when creating your timeline. Mm-hmm. So the weather. The weather. <laughs> what time the sun sets in your area of the world? Yeah, because if you're getting married in a cooler month, the sun sets a bit earlier than like in warmer months. It's just like a yeah global moving rotation yeah, thing. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how the weather it's, works. It's all about. <laughs> The sun and the moon and the stars. How, anyway, how let's talk about sun. We'll talk about that in another episode. <laughs> yeah. I don't know enough about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just know that the sun sets earlier in the cooler months and so that no, means. No, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so that means that you need to have your ceremony a bit earlier. We're really yeah. just telling you guys, <laughs> stating really obvious things, but yeah. it is something that some couples don't think about. And I actually had. We had a wedding that we did, mm. remember the um, intimate wedding, where yes. they had it and it was like on the cusp of, I think it was yeah, in autumn sunset. or fall, yeah. what yeah. Americans, fall, would call it. <laughs> um, so <I> don't, <laughs> anyway, their ceremony was at sunset time. Yeah. So they didn't realise, but we were like, hang on, guys, you're actually going to have to have a first look because you're going to have no light for your mm. photos, portraits. Yeah. So, yeah, unfortunately the venue couldn't really bring it earlier because they had a cellar door. So that brings us to our next point is, you know, considering what is and isn't allowed within your space where you're getting married. Yeah, especially if it's a winery because they do have cellar doors that are opening and essentially if you want to have your ceremony earlier, you're asking them to earn less by closing earlier so that you can have your wedding there but they'll have a fee for that. So, like, to cover – whoever would have been at the cellar door anyway. Yeah, that's right. Mm. So travel times and logistics. So like thinking about where you're both getting ready as the couple and how far you're getting ready locations are to the ceremony and reception Yeah, as well as if you there's time like travel time between ceremony and reception. Most people have their that at the same place these days but there are some times when you don't do that and you need to consider the the travel time for that and also then you know travel time for guests as well yeah that's it so going back to the time of the year that you do get married because we're setting most like most of your day is based around your reception and your ceremony time. You need to make sure that you have enough time between your ceremony and reception for you to have all of your photos, cocktail hour, all of that. Um, But you want to make sure that you've got enough light. So you definitely have to work off of what time the sunset is and work back from that and make sure that you've got enough time. And, I mean, if you're having – a wedding, say in July, the sun sets at in like, Australia. Yeah, in, in Australia. July in, yeah, in, oh, yeah. In, in America, it's very different. Um, but in July in um, in Australia, it is generally the sun sets at five or quarter to five, which yeah. is quite early. And then even more so, like if you had your wedding in. Tasmania, it's even earlier. earlier. Yeah. It's like 4 30 in the afternoon, which yeah. is just crazy. And depending to me. on where you are in the world, it's yeah. it's, ve- it's very 
different yeah, everywhere. Exactly. Like um, in Alaska, you could have all darkness could, or all light. Well, they might just do flash photos. Yeah, that's true. Um, Such but, a vibe. You know, the other thing is you might not, this is all depend, you know, the sunset time and all of that sort of thing and this ceremony. I guess what Dana is saying about, you know, having a couple of hours between ceremony and reception is really important if you're having your photos after the mm-hmm. ceremony. Yeah. If you're doing a first look, yeah, you can obviously that. that's, um, yeah. That's different. Some yeah. people do the first look so they don't have to go away for yeah. photos. Yeah. That comes to a really good point actually that I didn't have in our notes, which <laughs> is that it's potentially not a good time to do a first look in summer or like the peak of summer. Like, So I'm talking like December, January, February. In Australia. In Australia. <laughs> um, so like doing a first look then because A, it will – potentially be too hot and B, it'll be too bright. Yeah. So because like if you're thinking about getting married during those times, generally you'll be basing your ceremony time at 5, 5.30 yeah. to be honest. I mean everyone is different and you can choose whatever time you want but generally that's I mean you just have to better. be aware though if you do you have it at a time when the sun's really bright, mm-hmm. your photos might not be if your inspo for photos is like – a darker moodier vibe, <laughs> you you might not get that style of photo Yeah, if you're having your ceremony at a time yeah. when the sun's really beating down. Mm. I mean um, light can be different all times of the year and, you know, it can yeah. rain in February. So <laughs> That's right. Yeah, exactly. So let's talk a little bit about how much time you need for some parts of the day. So let's start with ceremony. Yeah. So if you're just having a short, sharp elopement, yeah. Ceremony. Oh, it's like 10, 15 I minutes. went to one on the weekend. Yeah. It was a registry, you know, very casual wedding. Mm-hmm. It was just all the essentials, not personalised vows and that sort of thing, yeah. and it was probably a 10-minute ceremony. Yeah. But that's probably the exception to the rule. Most of yeah. the time people – I would say the average that I see is like 30 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Tops. Yeah, 30 minutes, yeah. But you were saying to me that – you know, obviously yeah, with a church ceremony. Yeah, if it's a religious ceremony, then it can go for up to an hour and a half to maybe like two to three hours, depending. Like we've been to a Greek Orthodox wedding before that went for maybe two hours, I think. Wow. Okay, yep. So I had a couple that were Italian. The, the bride was Italian, the groom was Greek, and they had two ceremonies at two different churches around the corner from each other. So that timeline was very tight Yeah. because – yeah, they had one ceremony at 12 and the next one at one thirty or something mm. and they had to squeeze family photos in there and that was really difficult, that wedding, for the photographer because they had to just be like, right, you can only fit this many family photos in yeah. between ceremony and, yeah. and the next ceremony. But, yeah, also there's like Chinese tea ceremonies sometimes or um, not even just Chinese but I've had Vietnamese cu- um, couple have a tea ceremony mm-hmm. and so that sometimes they have that in the morning but sometimes they do that as part of the actual ceremony. Mm. So I suppose you've just got to factor all those things in and always allow a buffer. Mm. So allow like an extra 10 minutes or for it to run a bit late. Mm -hmm. Um, Emma from Sparrow Weddings in our episode with her, she gave a really good point where she was saying that your guests only have a certain amount of hours. In the day. Yeah, or that they can like, energy, you know, spend their energy. I think she said it was like six hours. Yeah, okay, mm. yeah. Yeah, so I'm probably getting that wrong. I don't know. I don't remember but I, it's yeah. true. Like you don't really, you don't want everyone to, your, your wedding day to feel like a drag. Yeah, oh, absolutely, <laughs> so yeah. So you need like to think about really that your guests are coming day. to your ceremony yeah. and they're also coming to your reception um, generally. So this from the beginning of the ceremony to the end of reception, that's how much time your guests are going to be yeah. kind of, Involved. <laughs> yeah, and mentally and stimulated. So You need to keep the momentum going. Yeah. If you have too big a gap, I think, between the ceremony and the reception. Yeah. It then you run the risk of everyone's tired, people start to get hungry, mm-hmm. um, people want to nap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, then people you lose. will go off to the pub or do something. Yeah, well, they yeah. do, but, like, if it's really long, yeah, it, it can sort of kill the vibe a bit. Yeah, well, they'll leave earlier because I know for us we had too much time between our – ceremony and reception like thinking that we you know we really wanted these beautiful photos we wanted lots of photos we wanted to allow lots of time for it but we didn't get any guidance 
on that from our photographer so we had way too much time. Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember going to McDonald's for lunch <laughs> with everyone because yeah. I was hungry, um, which is so funny. Um, but, yeah, people left really early from our reception. reception. They were just tired. As they soon as been the done. speeches were over at like seven, people like left. Yeah. And we had we went from a guest list of maybe 85 to, to like 40. Well, so <laughs> what Emma was saying in her episode about guests only having a certain yes. amount of hours in them before they start to drop off yeah. is probably true because you said your ceremony was around 12.30. Yeah. And then your reception didn't start six. till 6. Yeah. That's a really long time. It's a massive so, time. Yeah. So um, take it from Dana <laughs> from her mistake. <laughs> yes, please do. <laughs> Don't have your um, ceremony at midday. Yeah. yeah. I think you do also, you don't want it to be like ceremony over right straight into yeah. the reception an hour later because yeah. you need to allow time for photos if yeah. you're having photos afterwards. Yeah. And you also have to remember family photos straight yeah. after the ceremony. Mm. Um, you've got to factor in. How long would you say so you need I would to say, allow? so for family photos, I say 15 combinations for 30 minutes and that there's like a little bit of a buffer in there because what will happen is, you know, if you've got 15 combinations, if they're 15 combinations like based off of the template that we give because we'll give you a template of what couples normally have for their family photos, which makes it easier for you. You can just put their names in. We'll call them out. makes it super easy, super quick. If you go off of that and you're like, okay, I want to have my whole side of this family and my whole side of this family. Or friends. <laughs> yeah, or if you have lots of friends' photos in there, that's where communication comes in because those people have to know that they're in a photo. Otherwise, they're not going to be there when family photos are around. And that's what makes it really long is the organising and the coordination of lots of family members or yeah. family members that don't think that they're meant to be there. You need to nominate like someone that. who's organised, assertive, a little <clears throat> bit bossy to yeah. be in charge of your family photos and yeah. give them the list and make sure that they know who everyone is or at least have a loud enough voice that they can, <laughs> you know, um, call out and, and because – I didn't know this yeah. for my wedding, but I was lucky that my cousin is a wedding photographer and his wife took charge and she knows our family. So I remember thinking on the day, wow, she's doing a great job because she was <laughs> like, all right, where's this person and where's that person? And I thought, oh, I never actually factored this in mm. for my yeah. wedding day, but luckily, you know, they did. Yeah. So, um, you, yeah, it's definitely something that um, if your photographer's not organised and doesn't mention it to you, yeah. it's something that you should do. Yeah. Nominate someone. But mm. now we're going off topic a little bit and now talking <laughs> just about photography. But the other things, I guess, like just if you want to refer to our template, which is free, mm -hmm. head to the show notes or to our website and you can go to this episode and you'll be able to find the template and mm -hmm. that has some rough guides in there. Yeah. But um, I guess a key, another key thing to consider is sunset. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't just go out there for five minutes and have a photo and then come back in. Yeah. Like you need yeah. to allow, how long would you say? So 15 to 20 minutes for sunset photos depending on the spot that we're going to because we, like Doug and I, we have a look at where the sun will be and like a good spot for it and go, okay, it's it's going to be here or here. Yeah. Um, sometimes that changes because if you as the couple don't listen to us as to what time we need to leave the venue to get to the spot, Yeah. then we're chasing light and we have to go further or we have to go to a different spot because it, like the sunset does not wait. Like it, No, like, you have to get it in the yeah. right moment. So You can't say pause. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <the> yeah. <laughs> so And that's why I say 15 to 20 minutes because it's good. I think we always kind of leave 10 minutes before we want to be at the spot because – when you're walking out of your venue, like in your reception, people grab you or you're like, yeah. oh, I just need to check my teeth or I just need to put lipstick on or, you know, I just need to bustle my dress. There's like all these things and they're all things that need to be done prior to that. Otherwise you will miss out and you do not want to miss out on those photos because no. they're like some of the best from the whole day because you're so relaxed then. Yeah, and also yeah. the light's so beautiful. Yeah. There, yeah. I mean, some people, I guess it's not important. Do you ever have couples that don't do sunset photos? Yeah, sometimes. So sometimes we have, um, it might be like included in the time of when they have their portraits earlier because it is. It's the right time of day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. But some people aren't also into it or they might not even get a sunset. So it might yeah. be like cloudy and we got enough earlier, if yeah. that makes sense. So we just don't even worry about 
going out and doing more photos because then it's taking away from the guests as well. Because if there's no sunset um, and we've got everything we need, yeah, there's no point. Yeah. Um, with speeches, that's another thing to factor in, mm-hmm. but also giving people a time restriction that is pretty tight. Yeah. Um, because if you say to someone you've got five minutes, they'll always yeah. take ten. Yeah. So <laughs> give them a word count. Like yeah. be like five minutes and that equals to 600 words. Yeah, like I mean, I don't really know how to work that out, but you could mm. probably Google it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I just um, think because people will take liberties, they'll be like, "Okay, they said five minutes, but I'm going to talk for twenty minutes because I'm the father of the bride and I'm super important." Which yeah, and you might be, on their personality, but like, there's it? there's five other people that need to give speeches. Yeah, and that's so, the thing. I would um, speeches can really they can be great, but they can also kill the vibe. So. I would keep them to a minimum mm. in terms of how many different people you have doing speeches. Um, yeah. Olive would like the microphone. <laughs> so um, I think so I think as a general rule, I'm just thinking about some recent timelines I've done. So, you know, and I, I've heard that photographers hate this, but I have a lot of couples that split their speeches into yeah. two sets. Yeah. Now, I think photographers don't like that. I think it's more so videographers because when you're setting up for video for speeches, like it's it's a lot of organisation. So if you had your speeches and then um, no speeches or something else and then speeches again, you have to set up twice and it makes oh, it really can't hard. can't you just leave it in the same location? Well, it depends on what else is happening because the videographer needs to roam around and, and get other shots of between guess. the two speech times. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. and I mean you might have and speeches <laughs> And then you'll have sunset photos. So they're not going to leave everything set up, especially because when they do set up, it might be um, somewhere where guests need to walk through. Oh, yeah, right. All the guests are seated during speeches. So it's not a good thing to have them split into two or it it depends. Okay. It's okay if you're not having a videographer, I would say, but I would say if you're having a videographer, it's better for you to have your speeches all together unless you've got like so many people doing speeches. If you've got a lot of speeches, you probably can't because then you've got to factor in food service. Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of these are all the things you need to think about Mm -hmm. and have discussions about early. Yeah. Um, And it's just talking to those suppliers about it. Yeah, talk to your videographer. Mm. Say, look, we've got like five people that want to do or five groups that want to do speeches. It's going to impact food time mm. if we do them all, you know, um, yeah. unless you do a couple at cocktail hour if you're not having a first look and you're going to be there for cocktail mm-hmm. hour. Yeah. I've had a client that did all their speeches in cocktail hour mm. um, because they did a first look and then they had their ceremony and then there was like an hour there where guests were just mingling and drinking and eating canapes. So they were like, well, let's get the speeches out the way now, mm-hmm. which I think is a great thing if you're doing a first look. So talked a lot about video and photography. <laughs> they we're will, biased. Yeah, <laughs> they will give you a template. There's a we've talked about people will give you a template for the times that they need. Yeah, and so you can talk to those suppliers. Those suppliers can give you their expertise, their advice on what they think works for that venue, for you know that ceremony space, all of that. Um, they will guide you. Um, it's really important, I think, to listen to your vendors about what works really well, especially when it comes to lighting, photography, and the other main thing is like service for catering because they're the things that um, will impact your day the most. Yeah. Mm. Um, the other thing about time, sorry, because I this did pop into my head, mm-hmm. was um, you also need to make sure it's really important to talk to your venue or caterer, whoever's serving your food, about how long they need because yeah. serving a wedding of 50 people versus 200 people. Yeah, it's very different. And, you know, you need to factor in like how long it takes them to serve the food Yeah, but then also how to long it takes plates. people to eat it and then yeah. how long it's going to take them to clear those plates. Yeah, And often you don't really want to have speeches happening during that time because, no. one, it means the people speaking don't get a warm hot meal and two it means that there's back a lot of background noise yeah um a lot of interruptions yeah and interruptions and like people walking around in between and that sort of thing so 
it's important to factor that in. Yeah. The other thing is like hair and makeup times. It's great mm. to talk to your photographer about like, hey, what time do I need my mm. makeup to be completely done yeah. or what time does hair need to be completely finished? Yeah. And then if you get that time and you give that to your hair and makeup people, mm. they can they'll be able to, to tell you, yeah, what time mm. they need to arrive. Yeah. Yeah. Based on how many people that you've got for hair yeah. and makeup. Yeah. It's like a little jigsaw puzzle but yeah. it's kind of fun. It really is. <laughs> Probably not for you if you're planning your whole wedding but <laughs> – so who do you give your timeline to? Um, it's a very important, I guess, factor. And, you know, I would say obviously all the people we've named, but it doesn't hurt to also give it to your um, key family members or bridal wedding party, sorry, mm-hmm. Um yeah, your, your partner. <laughs> well, yeah, don't forget yeah. to give it to your partner. Yeah. I just that's they a given. Definitely need it. Yeah. Yeah. But key family members like yep. wedding um, that party. need to know what's happening. Wedding party, venue, caterer, mm-hmm. photographer, videographer. I generally will just give it to all suppliers yeah, because it's good for them to know. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Because then going into like the next level of it, which we talked about when we were formulating this episode, is that there are some vendors that will need to know what time to to do all of their things. Yeah. So like stationery and florist and styling and all of that, yeah. um, which they'll figure out their own times based on the timeline. Yeah, you don't mm. need to put in like for me, I, if I'm planning a wedding and setting mm. it up, I don't expect the couple to know what time I'm arriving. Mm-hmm. Like I work that out myself. Yeah. And I don't sometimes don't even put it on the timeline because yeah. I just let the venue know I'm coming at seven or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to worry too much about all those things, but it's important that they know when everything has to be done by. Yeah. Obviously you would share it with your musicians as well and your MC and that sort of thing as well. Um, and the people doing speeches, that's something that, often gets missed. Yeah. Give the timeline to them as well. And a key tip that I have with family photos is to let those people know that they're in a photo. You don't even have to tell them like the list of photo no. family photos. I mean, if it's easier for you to cut and paste it, it is a little bit overwhelming if they're getting that with all the combinations. But if you yeah. just tell them, hey, your Uncle Bob and you're in a photo. Like, yeah. Yeah. So if Uncle Bob is in a wedding photo, you can text him or maybe email him if he's an uncle um, and just be like, hey, you're in this photo. Make sure that you're around for family photos because especially if you're moving from like a ceremony spot to a cocktail spot, yeah. if you're having your photos somewhere different to where the ceremony like location is, then it's it's going to be really hard to get your family over there and especially get them motivated if there's food and drink flowing everywhere Yeah, they'll as just well. disappear and then yeah. all of a sudden, oh, Bob didn't get his photo. Yeah. <laughs> and it's happened before too. People have either given like added in someone extra last minute and, you know, it's not within the two weeks of when we need to be given the timeline and so it's like too late, like we've already printed it or whatever. Like if it's the day before, you, it's very hard to keep that photo in because yeah. – if it doesn't get written on the timeline, then it does just does not happen. That's why it's really important, we say, when it comes to photography, to write down those photos because otherwise they're not happening. Yeah. That's and that's right. what happened at my wedding because I had um, on our timeline template, I wrote down all the combinations of family photos that we, we wanted that were really important, took us ages to put together, and then the photographer did not bring – the timeline on the day. Oh, so you and missed a lot of photos. Yeah. So we didn't get any of the family photos that were like, we were calling out people to come and stand with us to have their photos. And they weren't the combinations that we wanted because we can't remember it. That's yeah. why we wrote them down on the timeline. That's why we gave you the timeline yeah, as the so photographer maybe it's a up tip, to you to take those photos. Maybe a tip would be to bring it with you. Yeah. Because if you don't know if your photographer is going to be organized. Oh, they yeah. should be. They, they should be, but so you never know. Like, yeah. Um, So we're going to finish the episode by giving you our key tips to take away um, to allow you to have an amazing wedding day. So what are our key tips about timeline? Being organised. Yeah. (laughs) Be organised. Yes. Start the process early. Talk about your timeline as soon as you have your venue booked in. Mm -hmm. Start talking about it. Yeah. And it's really good because you need to have those times locked in um, before – you send out your invitations because if you send out your invitations and you say we're going to have our ceremony at this time and our reception at this time, um, 
and you haven't spoken to all your key vendors about your time timing for your day, you will end up having to change that. I'm a perfect example yeah. of that. <laughs> I actually did not think about any of this for my own wedding mm -hmm. and we had like a 5 p.m. or maybe it was like a 5.30 ceremony. Mm -hmm. Either way, it was quite a late in the day ceremony mm -hmm. but it was at the same venue, ceremony and reception and it wasn't until like my cousin who was the photographer said to me, hey, like, you know, because I, I, I was new to all this, um, he said to me, hang on, your ceremony is at this time but your reception starts an hour later. Yeah. That's not going to be enough time for photos. Yeah. Including family photos. Yeah. So he's like, I think you need to change your ceremony time. So I had to contact everyone. Luckily I had a wedding website. Yeah. So I could do that. Oh, that's But I good. actually had to, yeah, I had to like let everyone know mm -hmm. and then I think we had one person rock up in the middle of our ceremony because they didn't get <laughs> yeah. the memo. Yeah. So I, most people knew the like I guess most of the people that I was talking to knew, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's I'm a culprit of that and it it happens quite a bit. Yeah. So you need to consider logistics. Like where is everything? Like how far is it for your guests to travel, you know? Um how far is it to the bathrooms? You know, from the ceremony location to the reception location do people need to drive do they need to walk like th thinking about all of these kind of things you know is there enough parking how many toilets are there if yeah. it's a private property if you've only yeah. got one port -a -loo, you're gonna have guests in the toilet when you're supposed <laughs> to be walking down the aisle yeah I don't know like I mean that's all a little bit unrelated but it it, it all kind of does factor into how smoothly your day goes mm -hmm. Make sure that you have buffers in your timeline. So having a forgiving timeline with buffers built in mm -hmm. and making sure that you're allowing extra so not planning everything down to the minute is probably one huge piece of advice I would give. Yeah, it makes it so much less stressful and you can actually breathe and enjoy your day. Yeah, if you think speeches yeah. are going to take 10 minutes, allow 20. If yeah. you think sunset photos are going to take five minutes, allow 20 <laughs> as a yeah. general rule allow 20 minutes for it's everything just good. I guess like you you want to feel like you're making the most of every minute of the day but you don't need to plan every single minute of the day and no. you don't need to have it so that it's in like 10 or 15 minute increments or anything like that you just you need to inbuild these times for there to be space yeah um, to time breathe, for you to go to the yeah. like you've got to go to the toilet yourself exactly in between things. yeah and going to the toilet if you're wearing a wedding dress is no easy feat yeah <laughs> <laughs> you need a helper mm, yeah um one thing I would also say is like um you know if something's finishing like if you've got speeches down for eight to eight thirty mm -hmm. don't then go first dance is eight thirty yeah on the dot yeah. I always then go okay well first dance can be like eight forty five yeah eight forty five yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Just just allow those buffers because if you're running ahead of time, that's great, you know. Yeah. You can let yeah. your MC or your DJ, whoever's calling out whatever's happening next, yeah. you can let them know, hey, if we finish this thing early, I'm yeah. happy to keep the, yeah. the night rolling through. Yeah, that's good. Then you have more time for dancing later too. Yeah, so there's yeah. No, no need to like um, jam pack everything in yeah. there. Allow yeah. some sort of 10, 15-minute breathing spaces yeah. in between. I think it allows for so much more connection with your partner on your wedding day. Yeah. And it is really at the end of the day about you guys creating a marriage together and celebrating that. And I think it's nice to have little moments that you can actually spend. Enjoy together. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. So another thing is don't keep your guests waiting, like what I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, You don't need four plus hours for photos. You only need like an hour and a half. So Learn from yeah. our mistakes. <laughs> yes, please do. So you don't want your guests to wear out and you don't want your guests to feel like they don't see you because you're there to celebrate with your guests and it is possible to have a balance and get all the photos that you want and see all the people that you love and have a really great time. Yeah. So I know we bang on about this all the time, but do what is important to you and your partner. Um, don't do things because you feel you have to do them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't feel pressured. Yeah, if you don't want to spend heaps of time having photos, mm. talk to your photographer about it and see yeah. like what's, you know, what how can, how can we cut this back? Yeah, exactly. We, there's so many grooms all the time that are like, hate photos I yeah. mean once they get going with us they're like oh you guys are so fun this is so easy yeah they but, just want um, a party <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah generally you can keep it 
to like a minimal, like, you know, still get the photos that you want, but do it within a short amount of time. So no one's getting exhausted during photos and be like, really more photos, really more photos. Yeah. 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 So choosing vendors that will help you with your timeline. So how do you know how, like if you're a couple and you're looking at, how do you actually know which suppliers help with that? Mm -hmm. I think that there's something that you ask when you are booking them Yeah. or, uh, inquiring with them so will you help me build our timeline like are you you know can you provide some insights and input into that exactly yeah because you you would want to know like for this is a complicated example but for a florist for example if you're saying look I want to do a sunrise wedding um can you help us with the timing of when you would come and do your flowers like that's that's going to take out a bit of time because I can just imagine the nightmare timing for everything else. But yeah. hey, if you want to have a sunrise wedding, totally do it. Oh, um, usually, then you can have a breakfast buffet. Yum. <laughs> I did have a client who, a couple who had a sunrise um, pre wedding shoot. Yeah. And she wanted her bouquet for that. Yeah. And she just did a dried bouquet because she could pick it up a couple of days before. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great idea. Yeah. But yeah, I think you just ask when you're inquiring, you know, do you give us the timings that you need and will you help us with the timings for on the day when it comes to whatever expertise that you're providing for us? Yeah. Actually, I've got one more tip. Mm -hmm. On your on the day timeline, make sure that you have on there the key contact people somewhere at the top yeah, or a list of suppliers and contacts, but Mm -hmm. also have the addresses where you are each getting ready. Yeah. Yep. So sometimes that's something that's missed. Yeah. So have, you know, um, if it's a bride and groom, for example, um, then you would have brides getting ready yep. address, grooms mm-hmm. getting ready address, yep. location. And that way it also saves last minute questions, phone yeah. calls, emails from like your florist going, where am I delivering the flowers? Yeah. Got no addresses. <laughs> yeah. No, exactly. And also having those key contact people, like you said, is really good because then you're not contacting the bride yeah. while she's in, in the makeup chair getting her eyes done and can't answer the phone. Your phone will be yeah. running hot. If you don't provide yeah. people with the information they need, mm-hmm. your phone will not stop ringing. Yeah. I also ask my couples for an emergency contact on the day yeah. for the for each partner. And so mm-hmm. ha- I usually say it's got to be someone who's got access to you on the day that's probably either getting ready with you or, mm-hmm. you know, someone who's not going to stress you out. Mm-hmm. But if something happens, like, for example, there's only been one or two times where I've had to call the emergency contact and it's been to, can you ask the client, like, for example, we can't find the cake knife, but it's a family mm-hmm. heirloom cake yeah. knife. We can't find it. They told us where it was, but it's not there. Yeah. So, you know, we didn't want to bother the bride so I, I just said you know to the photographer can you go and find this person because we mm-hmm. were on site yeah can you go and find this person who's her emergency contact yeah and tell them that we need to find the mm-hmm. cake knife yeah. so that's not an emergency in some people's eyes but mm-hmm. <laughs> in my wedding planning eyes it is <laughs> I can't tell you the amount of times that we have gotten to the reception and the couple have been announced and the first thing they do is the cake cutting and there's no knife like I can't wow. tell you how many times it has happened. Yeah, like, well, and that's it's the thing crazy. Is you don't have someone yeah. that's working with you or for you, mm-hmm. like a wedding planner. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> Need <laughs> a wedding planner. The gets missed yeah. and you have to cut the cake with your <laughs> pointer finger. <laughs> and no. that does not look yeah. pretty. No, normally it's me or Doug running to the kitchen being like, just get me any knife. Any and then knife. it's like this hideous, <laughs> huge butcher's knife. Yeah. <laughs> With a black candle. Yeah. 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 But it's fine. Like, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter what you cake you cut your cake with because it's still going to look good for photos. Generally, the knife is hidden anyway by the cake. Because it was another what, mistake yeah. of mine is not having a cake knife. So we hope that you found this episode about your on-the-day timeline really, really helpful. We do have a timeline template to give to you as well as a little bit of a cheat sheet on how to use it. So that will be in the show notes. Make sure that you have a look at that and make sure that you download that, share it with your friends. You know, um, it will be very helpful for you. If you want to give us any feedback on that, we would love to hear from you. You can email us or DM us on Instagram. So yeah, if you have any questions about the timeline or this episode, just let us know. If you're loving listening to our podcast and you're finding it really helpful to help us to be able to continue to give you this amazing information, we would love you to give us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. 